Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to this week's Elements Developer Diary. Now this week I've got a lot of stuff to cover including a new component but before I do that I just wanted to remind everyone that Elements is in early access which means you can visit elementsapp.io and go ahead and get your copy of Elements. You can follow along with this video and all the other ones we've done in the past and start building your website. Right, with that out of the way, let's dive in to what we're gonna talk about today. Now, let me close this. Some of you may be familiar with this website. Uh, this is the Marvel theme that we currently sell for Classic, and it's a really popular theme, because um, it's not surprising, it looks really nice, and it's got these nice effects on it, um, slanted headers, things like this. And I was looking at this and thought, yeah, okay, um, let's see if I can rebuild this in Elements. Um, that'll be a good test to see the tools we have in Elements, make sure we can recreate everything. And I was pretty confident we could do all of this. Obviously, these layouts are really, really easy in Elements, and we can go far beyond what um, a theme in Classic can do, or any themes can do, really. We go far beyond this. So this is all easy stuff. Now, there were a few bits that I thought, hmm, um, how am I going to do that uh, without any custom components? And that was this slant here on this background. That's a nice effect. And also this uh, static background image as you scroll down the page. You can see it behind there. Um, so there are a couple of things. And the other thing, let me just mute that. Um, this uh, light box for videos. I know there were a couple of things and elements we don't have. So this was a really good experiment to see what we were kind of missing and led us on to build this new component. So let's close that down and let's head over to Elements. And here you can see the project I'm working on. Now this is not a theme, this is just a new project that I've been putting together. And you can see here I've got these angular areas in the background and that is using our new background component which you can find in Layouts. Now, we've separated out the background component and didn't put it in the container because right now you often use containers for backgrounds um, like this one here, which is great. But we didn't want to overload the container with these really specific niche features. So we've separated it out to keep things nice and clean. And um, so this is the background and you can use this background container just as a normal um, background, you know, if you just want to put a color or an image on the screen, you can use that or a container, really flexible, but it has this angle option, um, as you can see here. So I can open that up and it gives me the top angle and the bottom. And what I can do, uh, I can just change this and you can see that changing in the background there. So, you know, I could have it angular like this. Um, and we could bring it down to where we want to start, but we also have the option to bring the top down as well. Um, so we can do this and you'll notice I've got my background inside a container and that's because the container has this color this background color and then this background works on top of it so it's really flexible this way of working um, so that's really nice so we created that so it's really easy to do these angular dividers and you'll see I'm using that again here I've got a separate kind of little banner area um, and I'm doing the same thing there. Like you can see, you know, if I just wanted a slight slant on there or going the other way, I could do that. So this is a nice, uh, nice, easy to use tool that's really flexible to get these effects, um, to get that kind of modern slanty effect. So the other thing, static background images. So the background, um, component, <laughs> sorry, the, my mind went blank then. The background component also uh, supports that as well. So we'll select uh, background and at the moment just got a color there, which is fine, but I want to switch it to an image and I've got some images here. So let's drop this one in and that's great. It's a static image and you can do all this with a container, but the extra option here is uh, we can set it to be fixed. So let's set that to be fixed. And now as I scroll down the page, um, you can see that stays as a static image. Let's just drag something else in there. So this is really nice. Let's go and view all this in the browser. Uh, so we've got our angles up the top um, and we scroll down and we can see this nice uh, 
this really nice effect here. We've got a little floaty button on top. Again, very easy to do in Elements, all this stuff. Um, yeah, so that's looking good. And, you know, this is really easy. Let me just um, duplicate this uh, section here. And um, what I can do, uh, we could just change this background to a different one. And it's quite a jazzy effect, but you'll see that it, they both just work. They both work independently. So showing that whole image behind there and the same for there. So you can do some really, um, really nice effects with this. There we go. Um, so it's pretty cool and really easy to use. And you can just, if you don't want it, um, there you go. That's fixed now. Switch it on and then it's in the background. Really easy to do. Let's just get rid of that one because we don't need that. And I'll switch that back. There we are. And um, yeah, so it's very simple, The uh, this background feature. Um, doesn't have many settings. We thought we'll keep it simple because you, you can just put this inside a container or a container inside this and then you get all the other options as well. So really quite a specific little component but um, it's something I really wanted because these angular lines, it's not like they're popular, but it's one of those effects you sometimes want to do or clients might want. Um, and we wanted an easy way to do that. And the same for this static background. I don't tend to use this stuff personally, but I know people like this kind of thing. So it's nice to have that option. So that's another um, component there. That's background and you can find that in layout when we drop the next build. And the other thing I wanted to quickly say, the video we've added Lightbox support um, and it's got things like, uh, you, can, you can set the color of the overlay um, and the opacity of it and also the blur. Let's preview this. So there you can see the background's blurred there. Uh, this one's a bit darker here, but yeah, so and it, and it just works nice and easy. Um, and that's the same. We have that on the uh, image, image component as well. We've got a little light box feature. Fairly basic at the moment, um, but it does the job and we can add features and stuff to that later down the line. That's the plan. So um, yeah, that's the new background component and the update to the video component. As I said, lots of stuff going on. Now we also are fixing a lot of bugs in the text editor. There was a bug where the editor would go gray completely, uh, especially on older machines. And uh, we fixed that up and added some, um, well, we've been refining and improving the performance of the editor. So it's even quicker when, um, when you're editing text. Really nice improvements there. Um, so I wanted to talk about themes now. We've been working on those. And on the forum, um, it came up that in our, um, in our color gradients, in these color palettes, we're missing the 950 color from Tailwind. So we've added an extra color on here. So we now have 950. So we're now in sync with Tailwind and we have that whole uh, selection of colors. So all of the, um, let's bring that up. So now, yeah, we've got that extra 950 color on the end. So you've got a darker shade there, which just, <clears throat> brings it in line with Tailwind and makes it even more um, flexible. So you get even more colors there, another darker shade, which is really nice. So as part of this work, we've also been working on the themes and um, because these, the ones we have built in were done a long time ago and they were missing a lot of uh, features and refinements. And, and since we've moved on and added a lot of stuff to elements, they kind of needed updating and they were always kind of just a, stopgap to show you what was possible. So we're now doing more work on that and hopefully some of this work will ship in the next build as well. So you can take a look. Um, but I just wanted to give you kind of an overview to show you um, how nice it is. If you, we have these extra colors on top of the Tailwind palettes. We have brand, accent, surface and text, and these should be in every theme. And if you stick to using these in your project, it means when you switch themes, your uh, everything will change in the theme. You obviously don't need to just use these. You can use all the Tailwind colors, but for your brand color and your, you know, the kind of highlights, 
you should be using these and the surface because it means if you do then you can easily click through the themes and kind of change the feel of it or create your own and know that it will work so um, let's have a look at this so I have um, this new blush theme here and when I select that you'll notice the tones all switch to soft tones and um, there's rounder corners and the fonts different there and it gives a totally different feel to the uh, to the design as you can see as I switch between these two really nice there's little gradients on these buttons and because it's all using these colors they just work and the surface color in the background everything just works which is really nice you can see these here um, got this strong accent color there and the brand color but when I switch to here it's a little bit softer it's just really nice and here really shows the difference um, you know the, the fonts aren't too different here all the sizes but they can be um, but yeah these this is just what we're working on now and it's really nice now also the typography we've added default styles for um, for this as well because at the moment let me just click on an old theme architect here you can see my typography everything is normal and there's no um, you know these are all styled as h1 h2 hc but and a paragraph quote but everything looks normal and that's because um, I've got nothing set up in the typography um, whereas with these we have a default um, typography setting we've got article here and all of these have been styled and set up for you so that means you can just drop in the typography component style things and it all just works so yeah so we're doing that which is really nice um, and I'm going to add these to the other themes round them out and just make it really nice to switch between themes and get a different feel for your website. Uh, let's go, let's go and view that in the browser. Yes, this is all really nice. You know, I've got a little um, animation on there and I've got these nice accordions here. So this looks uh, looks really lovely and it's all, um, whoops, let's set that back to zero. We didn't need to zoom in there. Yeah, this looks all looks really lovely. Um, and really, these themes are to give you a bit of a head start in designing your site, because once we combine these themes with um, the pre-built projects and also the um, templates, which are forthcoming, we've uh, we've been doing this work first and fixing up a fixing up a lot of issues because we've had a lot of new users not a lot of new issues reported so we want to kind of clear the decks a little bit and fix a lot of bugs before we finish implementing the templates but when we have the templates you know you'll be able to drag sections like this across um, with these pre-built things in them so drag in um, an FAQ and it will all be pre-built and then you can just pick the style of theme you want. So it's gonna be incredibly powerful and incredibly quick to build up an entire website and then just change the look of it. And you know, this will make it so quick. Maybe you've got a, um, you want something, look a, a website that looks a bit more technical, a bit more techy, and you could pick the system theme. Uh, or you know, you've got a, something a bit softer, you've got a flower shop, whatever then you can use uh, you can pick the theme that kind of suits your brand the best and then you can always override things and tweak things slightly um, to get it looking how you want so once what i'm trying to say is once the entire system's built out and we have these templates and things this really comes into its own and you'll see how um, just if you're starting to build a website, how powerful this is to work this way. So for now, um, I would recommend using brand, accent, surface and text starting in the next um, build because previously we were using, for a while we kind of had primary, secondary colors and then we had brand and secondary, but um, with the work we're doing and, uh, and refining this, we think this is a good default setup, a good base setup to have these colors and work with these colors. 
as extras. And in the theme, those will be at the top here of each theme. So, you know, uh, you can quickly overwrite these if you want to, you know. So um, what else is new? We've added magic FTP links to this as well. So if you're using Chili Dog, you can just automatically go into the dashboard and set up your FTP credentials in Elements. It's just a single click, boom, and then all you need is a password. So really quick to set up that publishing destination. So uh, that's gonna be in here. That's in Classic as well. We shipped that already and it will be in the next release of elements uh, we've upgraded php as well in this to the latest version so that's available uh, we also did some work on uh, anchors and linking to anchors within text that was a big request so at the moment um, let's just let's say uh, on here like on this container what i can do i can put a id in here so let's just call this banner and when I go, um, we'll call this banner. And when I click this link, um, we can jump straight to an anchor. And I've only got another set banner up. So I can click this link and it will jump down to this banner. But what um, some of you were requesting is the ability to highlight some text um, like this and make that an anchor. And we've added support for that because you can, in the text styles, you can highlight some text and you can, and you can override how this, um, how this text looks, you know, you can change the size and stuff like that. So it's very cool, but we've added the ID field in here as well. Um, so I could, or I could um, let's just put, text in there so this will now be available as an anchor so if i go back up here uh, banner and on here we'll call this one text and this one we're going to link to our text so go to page we want to link to this page the same page and there is text so now i can link to text right within um typography or text. So just another more flexible way to work. And again, you know, this is all the feedback loop that you guys are requesting stuff and we're adding it. Um, but this is, the next release is absolutely massive. We've added um, so much stuff in here. We, uh, we did, we've done some more work on the forms. There's just, uh, we're kind of, um, we should have done more releases since last week because we've added so much stuff, but we've, we, we kind of got um, down into the depths of the editor. So it kind of held back the release a little bit. So we want to get that work finished up and then we'll ship this new one. Um, and all this stuff will be in there. Loads of fixes. The release notes are looking pretty long now. Uh, so yeah, so lots happening. It's all good stuff. Um, and we'll hopefully ship that later this week. So look out for that. But that's it for today. I think I've covered most things and this video is definitely long enough. So I will finish it here. All right. Um, hope you enjoyed watching this video. I will see you in the next one and hopefully see you on the forum as well. All right. Thanks for watching this and I will see you soon. Cheers. Bye.